viewers of Sounding Board, long time no no see because we've been, I've been busy with other stuff like the fair, taking photos, and stuff like that. But today we're going to talk about Barbie, the movie doll. Why? Because it's a doll, a figure of Margot Robbie, a.k.a. Harlequin. And who wouldn't want a low... Uh, how would you put it? An economically affordable Margot Robbie to play with. With their child. Or with themselves. Because there are a lot of deviant males that would want to play with a Margot Robbie. Because it's, it's hard to, to not forget that she's a sexy woman. And she is now Barbie. The sexy toy woman. Who put a lot of smiles on young boys before they could see Playboy. Because Barbie, after all, was one of the few women that did that started wearing panties in the 90s. And in the 2000s, she started having a bra. Taking away the mysticism of the doll. Because to a lot of people that couldn't afford Playboy, Barbie was the bong. Because, yeah, she may not have nipples, and all the stuff that makes eroticism fun. Barbie was the first woman for a lot of people. So let's open her up and take a look. Since unlike other Mattel properties, Barbie's never really left the shelf. She's been close to it. but never fully hitting that stride of go away now. You know, even with all the controversy of Barbie's too sexy, Barbie doesn't support body positivity, but why should Barbie support body positivity? Bobby, Barbie is a, fantasy, a fashion fantasy to make people feel good about, women feel good about themselves, little girls. You know, no one really wants to play a doll that reminds them of how bad they, they are in real life. That's the thing that parents don't realize. Because the doll's got to represent me. Even though girls play that way, there are a lot of girl, the, there's a lot of people that actually look at this as moronic. And it's moronic how they put so many pegs in this doll's head to keep her from getting out. Oh, she has leg, leg chains. Okay. And she has all this, as you can see, all this stuff keeping her from moving, being released. Basically, once you take her out of package, you can hang on to the box, but why? Because you can't, like the older ones, kind of lock her back in with, with new clips. And so, we got Margot Robbie out. She used to be, this would have been a low end, a low end doll. But now, she's one of the higher-end dolls. Because she has uh, many points of articulation. She has the arm movement. She's basically the old fashionistas. Which I used to use for skateboarding. Photos. Um, she has legs that move. Hips. She doesn't have a waist that moves. Arms, head. 
She even has the wrists, something you don't see that often anymore. But I'm surprised they didn't put her for the price point on the uh, I Can Move Barbie. And she has the Margot Robbie head looking thing, which is a hybrid of Barbie and Margot Robbie. As well as um, a classic Barbie looking uh, 60s uh, thinking dress. But let's remove the outfit and see what body really has. Because Margot Robbie was in charge of this movie a lot. Oh wow, she actually has panties underneath here. Something you don't see anymore. Something you'll be selling, they'll be selling on eBay. And then she has panties underneath. Lo and behold, she's on the old uh, fashionista body. So you can now see Margot Robbie nude. She has a bow in her hair. Uh, she's not even, I thought she was on the Wonder Woman body, but she's not. And you can see right here where the, where the mole has this here. This was actually a body that had the, uh, that they, they made that they could, you, used to turn her here. Because of the two different uh, types of plastic. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing for collectors and I'm surprised they didn't give her a posable ankle because that's a big part of the commercials is where she sits there and takes her shoe off and she goes I can't make my foot all of a sudden goes flat and they didn't give the doll the ability to make its foot go flat let's put old Margot Robbie's panties back on and her dress since we now know what body type she's on and she has classic gaudy Barbie uh, jewelry like the heart little flower thing here and her thing right there and unrealistic looking Barbie uh, earrings because Barbie's earrings when they used to put them on her were basically diamonds stuff that you know you're going wow I dream I could have that, you know, making, making the whole thing of pimping ain't easy. Barbie's a who, because Ken's a, uh, a sugar daddy. But let's put her 60s, uh, how would you put it, June Cleaver dress on. But yeah. This looks like it'll be a fun doll to use for photos like Barbie and the World World Lush like the movie. Put her in places where she's locally around, where you're locally around. And she actually has a semi-build of Margot Robbie, which is nice. Unlike Amy Schumer, who wanted to do a whole feminist version of her, that fat Barbie needs to uh, get away and change the world, which isn't the entire premise of Barbie. Barbie's a fantasy doll and it's there for you to fulfill a fantasy to go be all that you can be maybe but not be a whole feminist icon and being a feminist icon you know feminism may have had its pros but now it has more cons because it's really more about empowerment not empowerment anymore but power you know like empowerment says has the key word power inside of it and it's turn turning a lot of these um, pseudo educated women into neo-nazis you know and they, they don't see it as that they see the people who don't agree with them as feminine as a uh, fascists and Nazis because you don't agree with them instead of talking it out maybe saying hey this is what I see is wrong with your movement here's what we can do to improve it you know not the fact that we're right you're wrong we don't need to listen to you and Barbie was never about that Barbie was always like I said about being fun shopping 
being all that you can be, like the mil you taking the old military quote, because Barbie was everything: president, cook, veterinarian, um, social activist, technically, because she does a lot of dolls that are focused around social uh, issues. You know, just helping people. Something we've forgotten about. And Barbie never forgot about that till recently. Now she's all about being beautiful, having body positivity, not forgetting, you know, everyone has to be part of this diverse crowd. And so you're going, where does the line be drawn between imagination and reality? Because a child doesn't care what they play with. It's about the colors, you know, and I don't know if they did this unintentionally. Even looking at the package art, it's about the colors with Barbie inside her plastic dream house. <laughs> Something you haven't seen since. And I think this is that's the 90s dream house. Actually, they have the 80s dream house where it's bigger, plastic was cheaper. You know, and Barbie was more of a mom figure. And this, like she's in this costume, she's got the mom dress. And even in the even the box here, when you look at the movie Barbie, the logo, it's Superstar Barbie. And then you got Margot Robbie posed in the back in the uh, classic uh, movie star pose. And it's, you know, it may not be a Barbie pose, but it's a classic Golden Age of Hollywood pose. And that's important. And Barbie's, even the, the whole design of the box is very 70s so that tells you that whoever designed the movie and designed these ideas realized that people don't want modern Barbies thinking they want 70s 80s back when Barbie was everything you know like the aqua song oh, it's a Barbie's world and a Barbie uh, something or something but we'll stop there and if you get a chance I would say pick this doll up for if you're a celebrity doll collector, but the male Ken doll, not so much, because he, he's ugly. He doesn't look like Ryan Gosling. That's kind of sad. You think they would have made put in more energy into Ken too, as well, because he's played by a big actor. And we'll stop there, because after all, Ryan Gosling was young Hercules. So until next time, this is the sounding board. Signing off.